one of my very good friends, who is also one of the smartest people I know, is in love with math. And one day, coming back from classes, I found him lounging about with a math textbook in front of him. And I asked him how he was doing, and asked him what he was doing, and he said, I'm reading for pleasure. And I looked down to see if uh, Harry Potter was hiding underneath his textbook, but it wasn't. So I asked him, is that your math textbook? And he answered quite cheerfully, yes, I'm going over proofs for fun. And I thought to myself, free time plus that insane stuff we did in math the other day is fun? Now, I laughed at this, and people might think this is funny, but why? Because most of us just don't think this way. In fact, my friend's attitude towards his coursework is grossly removed from that of the average college freshman. Now, back in ancient times, Greek philosophers Aristotle and Plato believed that the ultimate goals of education were to discover truth and to develop virtue. Recently, the CIRP conducted um, a survey of incoming college freshmen, and one of the survey questions asked, why did you come to college? And there was a curious shift in answers to this question over the course of the recession. In 2006, before the recession hit, the top answer that students chose was, quote, to learn more about things that interest me, an answer not so far removed from the ideals of Aristotle and Plato. However, in 2011, after the worst of the recession had hit, this top answer changed, and the new number one answer was, quote, to get a better job. Now, it's not too hard to understand this shift. I mean, the recession caused job loss, and it's natural for students to be worried about finding a good, good job. But could there be a deeper, more intrinsic reason for this shift in mentality? Now, imagine that you're with a bunch of friends, and you're going to the park to play basketball and you shoot around for a little bit, maybe play a couple pickup games, but after you're done, you all had a great time. And most likely, the reason you went to play basketball that day was because you enjoy playing basketball. Now, imagine you are in a stadium full of thousands of people, and you are on one of college basketball's elite teams, and you're about to play in one of the two final four games of the NCAA National Basketball Tournament. Now, perhaps you joined the team because of your love for basketball, but are you thinking about that right now? Maybe not. What you're probably thinking about is butting heads with the other team. What you might be thinking about is winning that game or not wanting to be the loser. This is essentially competition, and it is this competitive mindset that has infected the educational landscape recently of the United States. In September of 2011, President Barack Obama expressed a growing national concern when he said, quote, it is an undeniable fact that countries who out-educate us today will outcompete us tomorrow. Essentially, the president is putting the United States up against the entire world in an educational battle. And the fact that the president proposed this information as an undeniable fact emphasizes how ingrained competition and this competitiveness has become in the educational nature of our nation. Now one of the offspring of this competitive mindset is the No Child Left Behind Act. And the ringing promise of the act is that no student would get stuck in a failing school. But 
if you ask teachers and students at any high school, middle school, or elementary school what they think about the No Child Left Behind Act, most likely they're going to respond by talking about standardized testing. Now, one fourth grade teacher at an elementary school uh, talks about the effects of standardization in her classroom that she is experiencing personally and her peers are experiencing. And that is the eradication of the role of the teacher as an artist in the classroom, creating and developing their own lesson plans and assessments, which is essentially their professional responsibility. So you can ask the question, what is happening to the value of a teacher's creativity or their thoughts and mind or even their degree when all they have to do is teach to a set of guidelines and standardized practice tests and quizzes? Another teacher who teaches high school English classes has seen a change in the approach toward education. And she's seen a shift away from, over the past 30 or 40 years, she's seen a shift away from what used to be students' creativity and independent learning emphasized. And what she said, she said individuality used to be key. And this competitive and grade-oriented mindset is carrying over into the collegiate level. Now this comic illustrates an exaggerated brainwashing of students that eliminates the goals of Aristotle and Plato and basically boils education down to a set of grades and standardized test scores. Mark McKenna, a teacher of theater and arts-based courses at Muhlenberg College, sees this grade-oriented mindset firsthand in his own students. What he describes what he sees as an obsession in individual students to obtain the highest grade possible. But he distinguishes this obsession from, quote, the ethic of working one's hardest to master the material through inquisitive participation in class discussion and activities, and as well as using coursework and assignments as opportunities to explore coursework more thoroughly. In essence, Professor McKenna is seeing his students more preoccupied with getting a better grade than with actually learning. Now, Mark Twain once said, I have never let my schooling interfere with my education. I found this quote on the internet under a link of top quotes about education, and it was the second most liked quote with 10,309 likes. Now, if this quote is so popular and 10,000 people like it, why do we still insist on letting schooling interfere with education? Perhaps it's because this grade-oriented, competitive mindset has become stuck in our minds, no matter what we want to think. And it's almost a natural reflex to ask and to think, what is my grade going to be? But it doesn't have to stay this way. Maybe we can be more like my math-loving friend. Or maybe next time you sit down to write your English blogs at 10 o'clock at night, and they're due at 12 p.m., and instead of thinking, oh, this sucks, am I even going to get a grade on this? What is the point? You can stop and think, you know what? I kind of enjoy writing these blogs. I I've had fun writing my passion blog. Maybe this can be an opportunity for me to learn to enjoy and to love and to find passion for my learning. Because, as Aristotle once said, educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. Thank you.